Welcome to Molecular Geometry and VSEPR. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to predict the three-dimensional structure of molecules. If we look at the Lewis structure of a molecule, like the one for water, it does a good job of showing us how atoms are connected to each other and how the electrons are making bonds. But what it doesn't really tell us is anything about the actual shape of the molecule. And when we talk about molecular geometry as something we're interested in, that's just a fancy way of saying shape. So this structure is two-dimensional because we're writing it on a surface, on a flat surface. Molecules, on the other hand, are three-dimensional. They're real objects. So this structure can only do a partial job of representing what the true shape is, what the true molecular geometry is of the water molecule. There's a way of predicting what the three-dimensional shape is going to be based on a very simple principle. Uh, and this theory is called VSEPR, V-S-E-P-R, VSEPR theory. And VSEPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. And this theory basically has two components. The first part is sort of in the name. Electron pairs repel each other. Now that should be fairly obvious by now because we know that electrons are negative and that if an electron came near another electron, they'd repel each other because they're the same charge. The second part of this says that the molecule is organized or arranged to minimize these repulsions. Let's take a look at two molecules to get an idea of what Vesper theory really means. For the first molecule, let's just stick with water. And I've already drawn the Lewis structure for it, uh, but it's worth pointing out I could also draw the Lewis structure this way. And you might already start to see that these Lewis structures are both accurate, and yet they don't really tell me anything about the shape, because according to the first one I drew, the water molecule has its atoms arranged in this sort of flipped upside down L shape, and in the second one I drew that the atoms are arranged in a line, in a linear arrangement. So how do I know what the real shape actually is? Before we answer that, let's take a look at the second molecule we can compare it with, uh, beryllium fluoride. So beryllium fluoride is BeF2. There's only going to be one possible Lewis structure for beryllium fluoride, and it's going to be beryllium as a central atom uh, with bonds going out to the fluorine atoms. And of course, each fluorine should have the non-bonding pairs written in as well. So we'll put those in very quickly. There we go. So here's our Lewis structure for beryllium fluoride. According to this Lewis structure, again, these atoms are in a line, so it would be linear in the arrangement. So let's see if the actual molecule holds up uh, to what the Lewis structure is telling us. Here's a model of the beryllium fluoride molecule. Uh, we can see the fluorines on the end, the green color. Uh, and as I move this around, you'll see that the atoms are in a line forming this linear shape. Now let's compare that to what water looks like. So here's water. Now you'll notice as I rotate this model of water uh, that at first it may look like it's linear if I look at it from a certain angle, but as we move it around some more and start to see its true 3D arrangement, we'll notice it's definitely not linear the atoms are not lined up in a row. In fact, the two hydrogens are in this sort of bent arrangement, and that's actually the name of this shape. This is a bent molecule. But it's also not at the 90 degree angle we would expect based on this Lewis structure either. So how can we explain this bent shape of the water molecule, and why is it not like the beryllium fluoride molecule, even though both have three atoms, and it's possible to write out their Lewis structures with all the atoms in a row. Well, we can turn to Vesper theory for what's going on with the water molecule. Now, if we look at the beryllium fluoride, the beryllium fluoride, the central atom, is beryllium. And there are no other electrons around the beryllium besides the ones that are in the bonds. However, for water, we have this pair of electrons, and we also have this pair of electrons. These lone pairs of electrons are an incredibly negative region around this oxygen atom because there's two electrons and they're just floating around there 
they create a really big negative charge and that's going to exhibit a really strong repulsion on any other electrons. So we see the three-dimensional structure of water that we see because these bonds are moved away to try and minimize the repulsion that they would feel not just from each other but from those lone pairs of electrons. You can think about it as a lone pairs of electrons pushing those hydrogen atoms down, pushing those bonds away to form that bent shape. So that's another thing we can say for Vesper, that lone pair electrons exhibit a stronger repulsion than electrons and bonds. And that's going to affect the geometry of any molecule that has a lone pair in it. That wraps up our introduction to molecular geometry and the Vesper theory. In class, we're going to see several more shapes that are formed by molecules beyond just the bent and linear arrangements. If you have any questions about Vesper theory, make sure you write it down in your notes and bring it with you to class.